Good morning, John. In your last video, you were able to quite successfully point out that I'm a hog and Harry Balls were able to overcome the poor decision-making skills of their parents and become successful people despite their ridiculous names. And maybe Chris P. Bacon would never have become a successful composer if it weren't for his ridiculous name, but, you know, it's kind of the job of a parent to uh, help a child avoid unnecessary anguish. And let's be honest, a bad name can be a source of significant anguish. So for all of you future parents, and most importantly, your children, this is my guide to how to name your baby properly. First, say it out loud. Say it out loud in every possible permutation. And you might want to run it by a focus group of 12-year-olds. Like Andrew Peacock's parents never knew and neither did poor Drew until that day in fourth grade that this is starting to sound like a limerick. Anyway, punchline, Drew Peacock. It could have been avoided with a focus group of 12-year-olds saying it out loud. Second, name your child what you will call your child. This has been a problem for me my entire life. I am Hank. I have always been Hank. My whole life my parents called me Hank, but they named me William. So whenever I'm in a doctor's office or at the airport and somebody asks me what my name is, I sit there thinking for a second. And I feel like a doof because this person has just asked me what my name is and I should know what my name is and they're hastily adding me to the suspicious flyer list. Third, if you do not speak the language where your child will grow up, Get some native language speakers to come in and help you. Maybe the world wouldn't really be a better place if there were fewer hairy dongs out there, but it probably would be a better place for those hairy dongs. Fourth, stop trying to be cute. I know your name is Silva and you think it's adorable to name your daughter Sterling and your son Hi-Ho. And I'm in this group too. My last name is Green and I think it'd be adorable to have a daughter named Olive Green. But just don't do it because someday Hi-Ho Silva is going to be an adolescent and you don't want him to have another reason to hate you. Five, check for the top baby names and avoid them. Names, though you might have forgotten this in all of the excitement, have a utilitarian purpose. They are a unique identifier that you place upon a person so that that person can know when people are talking to or about that person. If your child has the same name as 10% of the people in their social group, I have news for you, you have failed. And don't just assume that if you avoid John and Jennifer, you're all good. Let me tell you, those names aren't even in the top 10 anymore. The two top baby names of 2010 were Jacob and Isabella, and there were more Jadens than there were John. Six, spell like a normal person. I don't understand why parents do this. It doesn't change anything. It just means that in the future you will have to spell your name every time anyone wants to write down your name. Do not name your child Michael or Kate or Joshua or Catherine. Seventh and last rule, name your child a freaking name. Do not name your child after a comic book character or an item of clothing or a profession or most importantly do not name it after some virtue that they will enjoy all too much rebelling against in their early teens like chastity. Okay and this is the actual final rule. There are no rules. Let's be honest. Harry Balls and I'm a Hog prove that you are not your name and it doesn't really matter. A bad name really probably won't lead to anything except a little bit of extra adolescent angst. And let's be honest, adolescents are going to find their angst somewhere. They might as well find it in their name. John, I'll see you tomorrow.